Hello everyone, I am Antonio Ivangelos Albertos and I will be presenting to you an advanced negative stiffness vibration absorber coupled with soil structure interaction effects for the seismic protection of buildings. We will start with the introduction. During the latest years, seismic codes have significantly been altered with the intention to lead to resilient structures that perform better under seismic loads. To this end, seismic isolation has been one of the main approaches aiming to reduce structural seismic accelerations. However, in order to isolate the building from its base, large displacements are required that are not always acceptable, hence rendering the system inadequate for retrofitting purposes. Seismic protection research focuses lately on devices which include the tune mass dampers, TNDs, and negative stiffness elements or devices, NSDs. A promising class of absorbers is based on increasing the damping by the appropriate introduction of negative stiffness elements. Proposed by Antoniadis et al., uh, the K-damper is a novel passive vibration absorption concept which has already been examined for the protection of bridges, wind turbines, and structural systems. In this particular study, the K-damper is implemented as a seismic protection measure within the base of a typical residential structure. The effects of the soil structure interaction coupled, coupled with the K-damper uh, dumping properties are investigated. Let us take a step back and see the progenitors of the K damper concept in more detail. A. The traditional tune mass damper, the TMD, an additional oscillating mass and damper are used to increase the total damping of the structure against dynamic loading. The TMD is designed to oscillate out of phase from the structural mass and as such opposes the movement, uh, opposes to the movement of the structure. The main problem of this vibration control strategy is the requirement for huge masses. B, TMDI, with an I standing for the inerter. This concept follows a similar approach to the TMD and the inerter is as assembled on top of the oscillating damper's mass aiming to increase its inertia and hence reduce the need of a huge damping mass. C, negative stiffness device, NSD, a device that incorporates elements of negative stiffness, which instead of resisting the deformation process, they assist the movement of the oscillator. As a result, when applied at the base of a structure, the negative stiffness element develops an apparent weakening or yielding, if you may, uh, and stiffness reduction of the superstructure to the direction of the dynamic excitation. In this way, the natural period of the oscillator increases and the acceleration of the superstructure reduces. The main problem of the NSD is the potential static instability of the system due to the reduction, due to the overall reduction of the horizontal stiffness. And C, and uh, excuse me, D, that's the K damper, a passive vibration isolation and damping concept based essentially on the optimal combination of appropriate stiffness elements, which include a negative stiffness element and additional appropriate mass and viscous dampers. In this particular presentation, um, the K-damper refers to the vibration absorption concept, whereas the EKD, standing for extended K-damper, here, refers to a device with a particular arrangement of mass and spring and also damping elements that materialize this concept. Let us now look into the EKD and its fundamental working, uh, working principles with the help of a single degree of freedom of uh, oscillator. Excuse me for that. Uh, specifically, an oscillator of mass M and static stiffness K underscore R is excited at its base by a seismic motion X underscore G. The EKD aims at minimizing the response U underscore S. The EKD is comprised of two stiffness elements, KN and KP, a mass MD, and two viscous dampers, set up and set down. The negative stiffness element Kn is utilized as a means to increase the inertia of the EKD, as can be easily derived by the equations of motion 1 and 2. A closer examination of those reveals that the elastic force of Kn is always in phase with the inertia force of the mass Md for a harmonic base excitation. In addition, the overall static stiffness of the system is maintained as per equation number 3. Hence, the issues of the NST are less prevalent here. However, an increase of the absolute value of Kn or reduction of the absolute values of Kp or Kr may endanger the static stability of the structure. In order to ensure the potential loss of static stability is, pre is prevented, the possible variations of Kn, Kp and Kr should be taken into account in the design and optimization of the EKD. Uh, as such, this potential variation is taken into consideration by introducing this epsilon underscore r, epsilon underscore p, and epsilon underscore n um, 
uh, factors and this way stability is ensured. Moving on, the EKD is now applied to multi-degree of freedom systems and in particular reinforced concrete residential buildings which are modeled as moment resisting frames founded on surface footings. A new methodology is proposed to provide a new design algorithm of the EKD which explicitly accounts for the soil structure interaction effects at the foundation level of the building. Finally, a numerical case study is briefly presented to validate this new methodology. So here we have a sketch of the building. That's a planner building of N stories and M identical base, hence that's a symmetric building in both horizontal axes. And we consider that for simplicity reasons. The EKD is implemented for seismic protection between the base, uh, so here, namely the ground level uh, where the seismic excitation is recorded and the first story of the structure. Oftentimes this level is referred to as the pilotis level. A number of assumptions are made such as that the total structure mass is concentrated at floor levels or that the columns are considered inextensible and weightless providing the lateral stiffness of the structure. And then a simplified spring mass damper mathematical model is derived. This model is in the core of the design methodology proposed herein and all the intermediate steps are created to compute the values of the component elements. The superstructure is considered to remain within the elastic limit during the analysis. And lastly, the stiffness, damping and mass matrices are then formed for the mathematical model and the equations of motions are expressed in matrix form. Focusing on the pilotis level, of the mathematical model, we observe that the first story slab here with mass M1 is connected to the ground with two springs in parallel, which in turn are comprised of two systems of two springs in a series connection. The upper spring represents the total lateral stiffness provided by the columns. That's K underscore R col. And also the, um, the one in blue that's the coupled with the footing and the soil and is responsible for the soil structure interaction uh, component uh, of the lateral stiffness. The lower spring represents the two components of the EKD, namely KN and KP, along with their viscous dampers, as can be seen in this sketch. In this section here, in the introduction of the SSI effects, the upper spring of the mathematical model presented previously Represented, representing the total lateral stiffness provided by the columns, which are coupled with the footings and the soil due to the SSI effects, is defined. All the calculations here refer to the case of a single column with a footing, as can be seen in this sketch here. But due to the linear dynamic analysis and the modeling of the building as a shear frame, they can be easily extrapolated to story level, which has multiple, multiple columns in parallel. The total lateral stiffness of the columns foundation system, namely KR, is calculated with this simple formula of two springs connected in series KR, SSI, and KR, COL, COL standing for column. The column spring is linear. The SSI spring, on the other hand, is nonlinear and is defined by employing a static pushover analysis at the finite element uh, code abacus with the following steps. Number one, a typical foundation and column are modeled in 3D and the soil stratum is considered to be isotropic homogeneous. Number two, nonlinear soil behavior and stress strain relationship is described by a simplified kinematic hardening model that follows a von Mises failure criterion with associated flow rule. Number three, the column, uh, which is modeled as a beam element and also the footing are deemed rigid. The interface four, the interface between the foundation and the soil is considered to be fully bonded. Five, the boundaries of the model have been strategically selected sufficiently far to avoid spurious boundary effects on the system response. And six, static pushover analysis are subsequently undertaken in order to derive the nonlinear soil foundation stiffness relationships or KRSSI. For the case of pilotis high of 3.5 meters and stiff clay of undrained shear strength ranging from 70 to 300 kPa, the results, are, the results produced by the abacus code are shown here. 
the calculated stiffness, KR SSI, is a result of both the rotational and horizontal displacement of the soil footing and is expressed at the top of the rigid column. The total stiffness, KR, of the system can be then calculated as the resultant of the structural column stiffness and equivalent stiffness at the top of the, of the column due to the rotational and horizontal displacement of the footing. After the simplified mathematical model has been formulated and the KR has been fully defined for the specific case, for the particular specific case, the following methodology is applied to design the EKD. The parameters F0, KN, C down and C up are the free design variables taken into consideration in the optimization problem, while parameters such as the additional damper mass MD or the, st or the stability factors epsilon N, epsilon P and epsilon R are considered known. Uh, let us uh, pay attention here to epsilon R, which takes a larger value because epsilon N and epsilon P are of the order of 10%. However, we on purpose select epsilon r to be uh, more than that and we have selected here a value of 25 percent in order to capture the uncertainty due to the ssi effects in the fluctuation of the lateral stiffness of the system for the optimization process a novel metaheuristic algorithm a harmony search algorithm in particular is adopted the constraints and the objective function are selected from the time domain responses Specifically, the structure's first floor drift is set as the objective function subject to an acceleration filter for the top story. We decide to excite the building with a series of 15 Eurocode 8 response spectrum compatible, and these are specifically for ground type C and important class 2 uh, artificial accelerograms. The harmony search algorithm then converges to the optimal design of the EKD after multiple iterations. A numerical case study has been conducted considering a four-story typical residential building to validate the methodology proposed herein. The structural system has four dynamic degrees of freedom. It is a shear frame, so we have those translational degrees of freedom. The mass of each floor is 80 tons. And analysis has been undertaken for, for different foundation and soil conditions, but we will present one here. Specifically, an under-designed footing based on the rocking foundation concept, which, however, ensures the vertical factor of safety to be in the range of three to four, as per the code provisions, is selected here. The type, is, uh, the type has an, an undrained shear strength equal to 70 kPa and a small strain shear modulus G node equal to 53 uh, megapascals. And uh, this here is a stiff clay. So the soil with those uh, parameters is modeling a stiff clay. And here we can see a sketch of the building. And on the right hand side, we can see a plan with a typical spans, with a typical spans of the base that we have in the building. A comparison between the response of the structural mode considering of A, fixed foundations, which can be seen here in gray. B, soil structure interaction effects by incorporating the non-linear stiffness of the soil, which can be seen here with red. And C, uh, the extended K damper coupled with SSI effects in blue is undertaken for one of the artificial accelerograms and a real earthquake excitation. In this slide, we see the results for the artificial of, of the artificial accelerogram. We observe a significant acceleration reduction of the top story of the order of 40 to 70 percent due to the SSI effects alone, but mainly due to the coupling of the SSI effects and the EKD. Significant reduction of the horizontal drift of the flexural deformation of the column in particular. So we can conclude that there is a reduction in both acceleration and displacements. Let us look now in the real event. We have chosen the L'Aquila excitation of the L'Aquila 2009 uh, medium to strong earthquake event. We observe a similar behavior and even though the EKD has not been designed according to real recordings, the performance is exceptional in terms of transmitted accelerations and satisfactory in terms of first-story drifts. 
This particular accelerogram features, as can we see here, in the domain around uh, t equal one second, a long period pulse, which significantly drops the total lateral stiffness of the system, thereby momentarily detuning the EKD and exacerbating its effic efficacy. Here we observe the distribution of the first story total horizontal displacement due to the flexural deformation of the column and the deformation due to the SSI effects. As it can be observed, although the displacement of the first story for the case of an artificial accelerogram reached around four centimeters, it was distributed both in the column in the form of flexural deformation and in the footing in the form of predominantly rotational and also translational displacement due to the SSI effects. The maximum flexural deformation was a mere 1.8 centimeters, which is almost three times lower than the flexural deformation that was demanded in the case of the building with no seismic protection. Same pattern can be observed for the lacula excitation. In absolute numbers, for both events, we have a dramatic reduction of accelerations. And for the total displacements, we, we don't have that much of a reduction. However, for the flexural displacements, for flexural deformations, excuse me, we have a dramatic reduction due to the SSI effects. Again, rotation and displacement of the footing. Uh, so we're, we're, we're summing up with uh, some conclusions. The implementation of the EKD as a seismic retrofitting measure at the base of residential buildings is investigated here for the first time. There has been an optimization of the EKD parameters taking into consideration those nonlinearities driven by the SSI effects. We have observed a drastic reduction of the absolute accelerations in the top story of the order of 40, reaching up to 70%. And also the flexural column deformation is substantially reduced. And this is the main indicator for structural damage. Hence, we can conclude that by combining soil structure interaction effects with slightly under-designed footings, as per the rocking foundation paradigm and also the EKD, uh, we can uh, uh, drastically and largely improve the drifts of the system other than the acceleration uh, of the top stories. And uh, as for the current future work, we need to focus on realistic finite element modeling of the EKD and the structure, taking into account structural and geotechnical nonlinearities. Thank you very much for your time.